In Section 2, Describe Core Azure Services, we'll cover describing the core Azure architectural concepts and describing core resources available within Azure. So let's first talk about regions. What are regions? A region represents a collection of data centers. A region provides flexibility and scale. A region helps you to preserve data residency. Selecting regions allows you to bring data, networking, storage, and compute power closer to your users to improve performance and reduce latency. As of the filming of this CERT prep session, Microsoft offers over 60 regions in over 140 countries, with new regions and data centers being announced and deployed monthly. It's important when you select which region to be aware of regional deployment availability. Most regions have the same services available. However, some regions may provide additional capabilities. There are also some services that are region independent. Azure also includes the concept of region pairs. Each Azure region is paired with another region. In order to promote disaster recovery and high availability, Azure prefers at least 300 miles of separation between data centers in a regional pair. Some services provide automatic replication to the paired region. Others do not. It's important as you architect an application to determine which services automatically replicate to paired regions. In the event of a service or regional outage, Recovery of one region is prioritized out of every pair. Azure system updates are rolled out to paired regions sequentially, not at the same time. This is done to ensure that an update causes a problem, it's not spread between both regions, and to also minimize downtime. Within regions are availability zones. Availability zones physically separate locations within an Azure region. This approach takes availability to the next level. Availability zones include one or more data centers equipped with independent power, cooling, and networking. It's important to note that availability zones act as an isolation boundary. If one data center in an availability zone is taken offline, the other availability zones continue to function. Let's talk about resource groups. When we refer to resources, we're referring to instances of services. Some examples could be a virtual machine, a database, an application service environment, and so forth. Resource groups are containers for multiple resources that share the same life cycle. Resource groups allow you to aggregate resources into a single manageable unit. It's incredibly important to know for this exam that every Azure resource must exist in one and only one resource group. Security of resources may be enforced at the resource group or at the individual resource level. That security is enforced using role-based access control or RBAC. So how do you start using Azure? The first thing you need is a subscription. An Azure subscription provides you with authenticated and authorized access to Azure accounts. An Azure account can have one subscription or multiple subscriptions. Subscriptions are not just used for access, however. They also provide a billing boundary. Each subscription is billed separately. This is helpful because you may want to separate out different applications into different subscriptions, or you may want to separate out your production environment from your development and testing environments. Subscriptions are also an access control boundary, meaning you can grant users access to different resources. For instance, you may grant application developers full access to one subscription, but then deny them permissions to the production environment subscription. You may imagine that after you have more than one subscription, it can become quite tedious to have to make changes across multiple subscriptions. Management groups allow you to manage multiple subscriptions as a single unit. Management groups can include multiple Azure subscriptions. Subscriptions inherit any conditions applied to the management group. A maximum of 10,000 management groups can be supported in a single Azure directory. A management group tree can also support up to six levels of depth. When we created Azure, we began with knowing that billions of resources deployed to the cloud, customers would need a single unified tool to manage them. Azure Resource Manager is that tool. Azure Resource Manager, or ARM, provides a management layer that enables you to create, update, and delete resources in your Azure subscription. ARM lets you create, configure, manage, and delete resources and resource groups. It organizes resources. ARM also controls access and resources. ARM automates using different tools in SDKs, and ARM stores layouts in JSON files. As I had noted previously, all components in Azure are referred to as resources. Some examples of resources are virtual machines, storage accounts, virtual networks, or VNets, application services, databases, and Azure functions. There are hundreds and hundreds of resource types available. Resources can be grouped into one of four major categories, 
The first category is Compute. Azure Compute Services provide computing resources on demand to consumers, including virtual machines, memory, networking, operating systems, and others. Azure Virtual Machines, or VMs, are one type of compute services. For development and testing, Azure VMs offer a quick and easy way to create a computer with specific configurations required to code and test an application. Because demand for your application can fluctuate, it might make economic sense to run it on a VM in Azure. You pay for extra VMs when you need them and shut them down when you don't. Virtual machines in Azure Virtual Network can easily be connected to your organization's network to provide you an extended data center. If you've written a web app or an API and you don't want to host it in a virtual machine, you can host that web app or API using Azure App Services. Azure App Services work with a number of popular programming languages and scales quickly by providing PaaS-based services. It also includes full security and capabilities to meet compliance requirements. Containers and container services are virtualized environment that frees you from having to manage the underlying operating system and provides a means to add customized components or configurations to a virtualized environment. Containers are meant to be lightweight and are designed to be created, scaled out, or stopped dynamically. Azure offers two containerization technologies, Azure Container Instances, which is a PaaS offering, or Azure Kubernetes Services, which is an orchestration service for containers in large distributed architectures and large volumes of containers. Windows Virtual Desktop is a desktop and application virtualization service that runs in Azure. It allows you to create full desktop virtualization without having to add gateway services. If you use Windows Virtual Desktop, you publish what are called host pools to Azure. If you have different workloads, you're able to run them in different host pools based upon type. One of the many benefits of Windows Virtual Desktop is the reduction of cost by pooling multi-session resources. So if, for example, every employee in your organization uses the same desktop applications, you can run that image out in Azure and have them log into the virtual desktops, perform their work there, and save their documents out to the cloud. If you need to make a new application available, instead of having to deploy that application to thousands of devices in your organization, you can simply update the virtual desktop and it will be available to all users. The next major category of resource types is Azure Networking Services. While there are many, many networking services, three key services to call out are Azure Virtual Networks, or VNets, that allow resources to communicate with one another to the internet or to your on-premise network. Virtual Private Network Gateway, or VPN Gateway, which is used to send encrypted traffic between an Azure VNet and an on-premise location over the public internet. And Azure Express Route, which extends your on-premises network into Azure over a private connection instead of over the public internet. The third major category of resource types is storage services. While there are many, many different Azure storage services, three notable ones to know for the exam are blob storage or container storage. Blob storage is used for storing massive amounts of unstructured data, like text or binary data. Disk storage, which lets you store and retrieve virtual machines, apps, and other services. And Azure Files, which is a highly available network file share that you can use, just like a file store on your desktop, using the SMB protocol. It's important to note that several storage technologies offer storage access tiers. The hot access tier is used for storing data that's accessed frequently, provides the best performance, and as a result, is the most costly. The cool access tier is for storing data that is infrequently accessed and stored for at least 30 days. The archive access tier is used for storing data that's rarely accessed, has to be stored at least 180 days, and has flexible latency requirements. It's the least expensive, but also takes the most amount of time to retrieve data from. The final resource type group is database services. Azure has many database service offerings. Azure Cosmos DB is a globally distributed NoSQL database service that elastically and horizontally independently scales both throughput and storage. Azure SQL Database is a relational database PaaS service based on the latest version of the SQL Server database engine, but it also provides backward compatibility. If you host your database on Azure SQL Database, you'll continue to get new features made available as they're released, and you'll have no need to take your database offline to perform upgrades. Azure Database for MySQL is a MySQL database service. Azure Database for PostgreSQL is a relational database service based on the open source Postgres SQL database engine. Azure SQL Managed Instance is the intelligent, scalable cloud database service that combines the broadest SQL Server database engine compatibility with all the benefits of a fully managed and evergreen platform as a service. 
SQL Managed Instance has near 100% compatibility with the latest SQL Server Enterprise Edition database engine, providing a native virtual network implementation that addresses common security concerns and a business model favorable to existing SQL Server customers. SQL Managed Instance also allows existing SQL Server customers to lift and shift their on-premises applications to the cloud with minimal application and database changes. At the same time, SQL Managed Instance preserves all PaaS capabilities, such as automatic patching and version updates, automated backups, high availability, that drastically reduce management overhead and total cost of ownership. Finally, Azure Marketplace is a product marketplace that connects end users with Microsoft partners, independent software vendors, and startups that offer solutions and services for Azure. Azure customers, IT professionals, and cloud developers can find, try, purchase, and provision Azure applications and services from certified service providers. Azure Marketplace includes over 10,000 product listings and can help you save time and money by not having to reinvent the wheel. That's the end of Section 2, Describing Core Azure Services. Some key takeaways. Microsoft provides more global presence than any other cloud service provider. There are many technologies used to manage Azure, but underpinning them all is the Azure Resource Manager, or ARM. There are numerous Azure services, but they may be grouped into four major categories, compute, networking, storage, and databases. Next up is Section 3, Describing Core Solutions and Management Tools on Azure.